Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and um, as you recall, about a year or so ago, we attempted to take this Windows 98 PC and upgrade it to Windows XP using an in -play, the in-place upgrade method, but we ran into a ton of issues, <laughs> crashes and whatnot, but... Um, off camera, I think I diagnosed the problem, and it turned out to be a uh, bad stick of RAM. Um, I ran MemTest86 on here, and I was getting a bunch of errors, and that seemed to solve the problem. Took the stick out and did a clean install of XP, and that's and that worked fine because even that wasn't working before. But it's been a year, and I haven't even tried the in-place upgrade yet, so we're going to. Uh, Finally, after one year, try this and see if it actually works. Um, and just for good measure and good luck, um, I actually um, have Computer Kid 1416 here with us Hello. today. And he's going to be uh, assisting us, giving moral support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we need plenty of that, so let's hope this works better now that the memory's been replaced. Yeah, he's uh, actually visiting me for um, a few days, um, like he did last year. Um, if you want to see um, a complete uh, chronicle of our escapades um, on this trip. Um, just check his channel out, he'll have a video. But let's go grab the tripod and get started. Okay, Graham, hand me the XP upgrade box, please. All right, here you go. Thank you. Here it is, um, still here from last year. Let's go ahead and uh, open it back up and We'll try this again. Set that over here. And if you want to see the uh, full uh, breakdown of this, uh, uh, the box contents that is, just check out the video from last year. But we'll go ahead and uh, take the disc out. Careful not to show our product key. <laughs> because Microsoft would have this video taken down in no time and we do not want that. We and do not. Pop this in the CD drive and well, let's hope we get further than last year. All right, install Windows XP. Because why else would we have put this disc in on <laughs> Windows 98? <laughs> Normally don't see this uh, in such high resolution. Yeah, I know. Any day now. <laughs> And we'll do an upgrade. And of course, we're doing this on a separate uh, SD card because I do actually um, want to keep my Windows 98 install that we have now. Okay, let's put the product key in. All right, we'll skip the uh, upgrade report. No, we don't want to download any updates from a, from a server that you can probably no longer access. Doing some thinking. All right, here we go. Um, of course, um, we haven't gotten past the uh, failure point yet, but it's going to analyze the computer, do a few things, and then um, we'll get into the nitty gritty of the upgrade. All right, we're fixing to uh, restart, and I'll do it manually with the escape key. And, uh, okay, I guess I'll I have to restart manually like this. <laughs> but presumably this will be the last time we'll see 98 on here. Until I put the other SD card back in. <laughs> and so hopefully it'll work this time. Uh, reminder, this is a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 with 256 megs of, me of memory. 
originally 512, but <laughs> yeah, I had to take half of that out because it was not working right. Yeah, so now we're going into the more uh, nitty gritty portion of setup. And of course, most people don't see this because most people um, who do this properly uh, upgrade, do a uh, clean install instead of an in-place upgrade, which I would highly recommend you do. This is where it would crash. Um, it would freeze up with those bl um, blinking dots on the bottom right. They would um, stop blinking, and um, it would just the system would just completely hang. And I don't remember how long that took, so I don't know if we've passed that point or not. But fingers crossed, though. Hard drive LED is still uh, solid red, which is a good sign. Yeah. I'm getting a little sweaty here, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Because I can't remember what exactly when it uh, crashed out on me. We may already be past the point, to be honest with you. Yeah, hopefully so. But all that just because of a bad stick of memory. If I remember correctly, when I did this on my uh, gateway back at the end of 2002, upgrading from Windows ME to XP, this part did take a good bit of time to do. And that upgrade, that computer, um, it ran ME like trash, and it ran XP like trash. It ran <laughs> everything like trash. Yeah. It was just a, a bad apple, uh, even though it was a uh, PC. <laughs> I just realized what I said there. That's a horrible dad joke, <laughs> unintentionally. Yeah, I think when I did my first in-place XP upgrade, I, I, I just left it overnight because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take. You know, I remember when I did this on my gateway when I was 13 years old, I uh, it was such an exciting moment that I got my favorite uh, CD and put it in my CD player and started playing it like it was a like it was a a road trip that you were going on, an exciting road trip. <laughs> I was crazy back then, but yeah, that computer uh, did not last long after that. We uh, eventually got myself a Dell Dimension twenty three fifty, and nineteen years later, I still own it. And that thing ran everything so beautifully. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that we're past the uh, point of error from last time, so I think we should be good to go. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, stop the video here, and we will resume when something interesting happens, if it does. All right, it computer rebooted, so um, I don't know what is up, up next for the install. Well, we got the official Windows XP Professional uh, startup screen now. This is the uh, pre-service pack two uh, one. I think this is actually the original RTM copy. All right, now we got a lot more colors now. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm so glad that this is actually working. All this just for a video um, of this, so I can just uh, nuke this install and go back to 98. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, it makes for uh, interesting video footage. Yeah. Yeah, I like experiments like this. And plus, this um, is sort of era-appropriate hardware, I guess you could say for uh, doing an install like this because a lot of people in 2001, 2002, this is what they were using, a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3. Yeah. Or similar. Yeah. It was, it was much more appropriate back then, for sure. Definitely. And back then, it was much more appropriate to be running XP on a Pentium 3. And you still can today, yes. But on something like a Pentium 3 or especially a Pentium 2... I highly recommend you just go with 98. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, same here. Save XP for your Pentium 4s and your Core 2 Duos. Yep. 
All right, this may take a little bit of time, so we'll go ahead and stop camera again. Okay, that took a little bit of time, but I think we're just about on the other side of the install. Removing uh, temporary files used, which you would think wouldn't take too long, but sometimes it does. Yeah. <laughs> but we're getting close. And here we go. Final reboot. Now the big question that Graham has is, are we going to get the out-of-box experience music? Yeah, that's now, my favorite. Technically we should because we're doing an upgrade, so the driver should be there, but this is a newer sound card, a Sound Blaster Autogy that came out in the XP era, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. It might have some incompatible drivers that'll be running on here because I am using 98 drivers. So we will have to see. Boots up fairly quick. Of course, mm -hmm. might be because of the SD card, but... Okay, we got full video resolution. That's a good sign. Yep. All right, um... Nope. No, I'm afraid we don't have any music. <laughs> that means this whole thing was useless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sound driver must not be set up properly yeah. on here. So we'll just breeze through this since <laughs> there's no sound. And we will not activate. Nope. Put my name in. Windows is starting up. And there's a fly in here. Isn't that nice? Yeah. You need to set a password for all new Windows XP accounts. We'll skip that. <laughs> I had actually never seen that before, believe me. I hadn't either. I guess because we did an upgrade to professional. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's probably, yeah. We're, 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 we were used to upgrading to home edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only time I ever used professional was at school. Yeah. I didn't start using professional until, I guess, the... Uh, late 2000s all right um all my programs are still there including um some of my windows 3.1 era stuff um, <laughs> that's awesome let's see what we got here it still works well, let's works. go into system properties okay it's properly detected a pentium 3 processor <laughs> Device Mangler, as some people call it. <laughs> yeah, it's not even picking up the uh, sound card at all. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess we could just uh, go on here and uh, go to my server and install it from there. Hopefully I have it on here. Sound Blaster Auto G1, yes. Let's see, audio, English. Set up. And hopefully this should uh, do the trick. No, I don't want to register. I remember the same thing happening on my uh, 2001 Gateway when I upgraded it to uh, XP from Millennium Edition because um, we had a heck of a time trying to get the sound drivers working. It had a, a creative sound blaster card of some type. I don't recall uh, what it was, but it, would, it didn't work out of the box when you in-place upgrade to XP, so... We had to use the CD that came with the computer and reinstall the drivers, which were ironically older than XP, but reinstalling them seemed to do the trick, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that computer was, ran ME like garbage, ran XP like garbage. It was not, <laughs> it was not a good computer. Yeah. Which I think I already said that in that, in this video, but 
that computer was just such a nightmare experience that it just bears worth repeating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll uh, restart. All right, that's. I, th I think that means that it yeah. <laughs> installed the drivers. Yep. Wish we'd had it during the out of box experience, but oh well. And so far, um, speed rise, it's running pretty good. Um, of course, this is the original pre service pack XP, so it's definitely going to run on here just fine. Yep. But I'm still not going to keep this installed because right on top of this computer, I have a uh, proper XP build with a Core 2 quad, KBM'd with all this stuff that runs all this way better. Yep, definitely. Add your .NET Passport to Windows XP. No, thank you. Yeah. Take a tour of Windows XP, maybe later. Alright. Yep, everything's accounted for now. Yep. So our processor, our Voodoo 3 video card. All right. And of course, um, since we did a upgrade from 98, we're still running off of FAT32. But I'm going to keep it there because um, I've had experience before running uh, NT-based OSs on SD cards like I am right now. Works fine on uh, FAT32, but when you go to NTFS, it it really, really slows things down, unfortunately. Yep. Let's see what works and what doesn't. Um, Ski Free works. Doesn't yeah. surprise me. <laughs> yeah. And Graham was wanting to see uh, Microsoft Bob run on Windows XP, which I have done before. Used to run it on my Dell Dimension 2350 back in the day. If they're working just fine. All right. Nice. Let's try some games out that I have on a separate partition. We'll try, um... 30 days left for activation. Oh no, what yeah. will we do? Uh, take the SD card out and replace it with another one. <laughs> Let's try this game out. Hi, I'm Buzzy the Knowledge Bugs. Actually works great. Yeah. Well. Even though we get that error at, when we exit, but... Hey, that's when we exit, so who cares? We'll try Fatty Bear. Obviously works better when you uh, lower the screen resolution, yeah. especially on a high-res monitor like this one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's working just fine. Of course, I don't expect DOS games to... Uh, do too well on here, especially this one. You get yeah. sound effects, but no music, which yeah. which um, the music is the big part of the game for me, so that kind of kind of ruins it. <laughs> but um, something like uh, Epic Pinball might work, though. Well, it works. <laughs> yeah. Not well, but it works. Yeah, 
that's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> uh, sounds like what happens when you uh, when you have a little too much NyQuil. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, we'll try Jazz Jack Rabbit. Same kind of thing going on there. Yep. Oh, yeah. Stick with MS DOS and Windows 9X, folks, yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, DOS games, uh, not that I'm surprised, do not work too well. So far, it's been more reliable than my uh, gateway yeah. <laughs> was um, doing an in place upgrade. Of course, if this were a real hard drive and not an SD card, I would be um, converting this to FAT32. But then again, I'm not keeping this installed, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Deluxe CD player from 98 still working. There's a Windows Media Player version uh, 8. I think I actually had Media Player 9 installed on here on when it was 98, but of course um, this copy of XP came out before Media Player 9. What are you going to do? Yeah. And of course Word 2000, no surprise there, works just fine. Why did I even show that? <laughs> we knew that was yeah. going to work. <laughs> oh, goodness. How about Incredible Machine? Nope. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, what a lot of people probably would have encountered when they first... Uh, upgraded to XP, they probably found that a lot of their software, especially their old games from like Windows 95 and 98, maybe even before that, just wouldn't work properly. I know uh, Earthworm Jim, my favorite computer game of all time, would not work properly on anything NT-based, so that was a no-go. Uh, let's see. Does Ultra Pinball work? Actually, I think it does. So far? So if you want to play uh, 3D Ultra Pinball from 1995 on Windows XP, go right ahead. Pinball game that people usually associate with Windows XP. No, they don't. This is it. People seem to forget that this was actually um, a game put out by Maxis in 1995. And in my, um, in my version of the meet, um, I made up video, um, if you guys want to check that out, I do show that game. The original, say, the original, um, Maxis Pinball game for Windows 95. So, we got a mixed bag here. Some stuff works um, from the upgrade, and some stuff just does not. <laughs> but like I said, this um, we went from 9X to NT-based uh, OS, so... Yeah. That's to be expected. Um, yes, that's my dog. Well, all in all, though, I'd say it's a better transition than um, XP to Vista, at least for me. That that transition was a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got Vista on a uh, clean install, factor, a factory install, actually, on a Dell Dimension E520 back in 
February of 2007, right when Vista came out, and that and Vista ran like garbage on it. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I had an E521, which was the AMD version of that, mm -hmm. and it ran even worse. Yeah, and my problem was is that I didn't spec it well enough. I was kind of a cheapskate and just went with one gig of RAM, and I had never had a computer before with a gig of RAM in it, yeah. and that was just uh, top of the line at the time to me, and it was also a Pentium D, and I thought, oh, this is so fancy, a Pentium D. There's no way uh, this computer will be a slow piece of crap, but it was, thanks to Vista. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, that my first experience with Vista was not a good one, unfortunately, but then I did run it on some other systems later um, a couple, within the next two years before 7 came out, and it did run just fine on those computers. So, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I'm glad we finally got this uh, fully functional. I will be going back to uh, Windows 98 on here. So uh, until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.